Uh, my name is Doreen Vogel, and I'm the leader and I'm the leader and the head investigator for the Pennsylvania Spirit Seekers. Okay, my name is Edward Roeder. I'm the tech guy for Pennsylvania Spirit Seekers. I take care of all the equipment. And my interest came um, later later in life. I had a near death experience, and that's what got me involved with it. And, you know, so I know there's something there. It's just one of those things like Bigfoot. You want to catch proof. <laughs> Uh, what sparked my interest is my sister was able to see, um, my dad had passed away when I was around 13 years old. Um, my sister started to see what was possibly my dad's spirit in, in our house. And like I said, I started watching the ghost shows on TV and I just really got interested and I just wanted to find out what's out there. I started doing ghost hunting uh, with another different paranormal group um, and I was with them for about six years. Uh, the group kind of, kind of dissolved, so I decided to create my own group, and that's how this Pennsylvania Spirit Seekers came about. We currently have, there's four of us, me, you, Daryl, and Andrea. Yeah, we have four regulars, then we have some, some members that aren't always free because of their careers and stuff, but if they could come along and join us, they, they do. So we look at them as part-timers. <laughs> Yeah, and everybody in the group, we're all friends. We go to each other's houses. We talk to them on the phone, you know, and it's, it's more of a, you know, this is to us more like a hobby because we don't charge for our services at ever. ever. Um, sometimes we actually have to pay to do an investigation. But, um, yeah, it's just the four of us, and it's, it's a small group, but we, when we go out, we're having fun, but we're also being professional at the same time. I mean, it's not like the ghost shows that you see on TV where you don't catch everything or get out activity on every investigation. It's just the way they have that edited. It makes it look like, you know, you go on a ghost hunt and it's a sure thing. It's not always like that. You can spend hours and not catch anything. I have been investigating now for almost close to 12 years, on and off. And then uh, we've been doing this for roughly about... I've been with the group for at least like five years. Yeah, and I think the group's been around for almost like six. And you're the best tech guy ever. Thank you. <laughs> Most memorable experience, which was also one of my scariest experiences, um, I had done an investigation in a home in East McKeesport. It wasn't when I had created this group. I was with the other group. But um, I had, there were some girl people downstairs in the basement, and the woman lived by herself and her children, and they were seeing shadow people in their home and they were getting scared so they were actually not living in the home they were living with a family friend and so we walked in the house the first thing i could smell was this terrible stench um i looked in the refrigerator there was no food in the refrigerator there was no garbage because they weren't living there uh, some of the people went downstairs in the basement uh, one girl was thrown against the wall um, when we were walking up the steps, there was a nail standing right on its head that hadn't been there before, right on the steps. And then when I was upstairs by myself, I had my video camera out and I was just panning the room. And shortly after I played it back and I caught an apparition in the hallway. And that's on our webpage. It's one of the things, it's my prized possession is my ghost girl that I got. And no one knows who she is but the house has since been torn down. Probably my scariest moment is we uh, did an investigation in Sharpsburg a few Halloweens back and I actually had a, an attachment. I don't know if it was something demonic, but they were off doing, I think, one of, the, one of the tours with the people from the party. And so I went off into the place where we had, it was an office and I shut the door behind me and the whole experience started off it was one of those older buildings so the, all both the outer walls were nothing but windows and there was a street light and as i was sitting in there and asking my questions something it was like a box truck pulled up in front of the window and blocked out the light and that's when i felt the attachment it stayed with me i felt drained i didn't want to interact with anybody and I, the second i walked out of the building i felt perfectly fine so whatever it was, fortunately, couldn't leave. I don't get really scared of the paranormal because they always say you got to be more afraid of the living than you are of the dead. Um, but I have gone to Gettysburg numerous times and I took my husband who was such a non-believer in this. Um, but we were in there, we were out in Gettysburg in the middle of August and it was a really hot night and he's a very big guy. And all of a sudden he goes, 
I'm getting cold. I'm like, okay. So I took out my pictures and I started taking pictures of them. And the one picture I have of them, there is this gigantic um, orb, like a glowing ball. They call it spirit energy. And it was right in front of him. And when he seen that, he didn't want to see anything else. So when I have investigations, he stays home. <laughs> well, there's uh, typical three types of hauntings. One would be uh, demonic. Pretty much it's something very nasty. Uh, the another type of haunting is a residual. And a residual haunting is uh, in an area that had, has experienced something very tragic, like Gettysburg. Um, it's something that it's like on a film and it just keeps on replaying itself over and over again. It's not aware that you're there. You can possibly see it or feel it, but it can't see you. And then you have your intellectual hauntings, which um, that's when you have um, a spirit that you can interact with, you can talk to, um, they normally give you questions. I had that happen to me in a, um, an investigation in place in, out in Monroeville. And basically I was walking around the house asking questions and when I played my EVP recorder back, one of the questions I always was, can you tell me your name? Can you tell me how old you are? And when I played it back, I heard a gentleman say in a very rough and very angry voice, 93. And so when I played it for the homeowner, I felt that kind of bad because he started to cry. And he said that that was his father who died at the age of 93, six months prior. So those are the three type of hauntings that we normally deal with. But the one thing that you do have to be aware of is a lot of times a demonic haunting um, or attachment, it can act like something that's intellectual, just so you kind of let your guard down. And then it could actually, you know, attach itself to you or, you know, do something not so nice. So you have to kind of always have your guard up because even though, like a lot of times they will act like a little child. Well, you're going to let your guard down because you think it's a child, but it could be something demonic. Our one investigator, Daryl, who could not be with us, she is pretty much the sensitive of the group. Um, she can sense, thin, sense things, she can see things. I'm somewhat of a, I'm so sensitive, but I can pick up on things, but I'm not that strong on it. Uh, Daryl is more stronger on it than I am. But it's basically um, how much you let yourself open up to. I mean, anybody could be a sensitive, but you just have to open yourself up to receive what's coming to you, what information is coming to you. And a lot of people just close that up because they don't want to. Like I had said before, you gotta be more afraid of the living than you are of the dead. They are not there to hurt you in any way, unless, unless it, let's say it's something demonic. But most of the time, if you're experiencing a ghost, it could be something that's, like I said, residual, which it doesn't know that you're there. And if it is an intellectual, it actually, it's kind of neat because they are like realizing somebody actually wants to talk to me. Somebody wants to know my story. Um, so if you were to see a ghost, there's really nothing to be afraid of. Because if, like I said, if probably if you're able to talk to it, it probably wants to just tell you their story and why they're there. And you know, there are a lot of people who are afraid of it, my husband being one, um, but there's really nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, I was, I was going to say pretty much the same thing. A lot of times if, you know, a spirit you know, will interact with you, it's more or less looking for closure of some sort, or like she said, to tell, tell its story. Um, they can always go on our website, which is paspiritseekers.com, and we have a contact section. Uh, you can send us an email, um, and then we would get that back to you probably within one to two days, because I check it every day. A lot of times when you get a, an email, it's always like, I don't want you to think I'm crazy, but, or you might think I'm crazy, but I'm like, no, I don't think you're crazy. You know, I listen to them um, and like someone, someone calls and they want an investigation done. Again, I sort of almost do like an interview over the phone, again, trying to get a feel for them. Uh, Cause there are people out there that would just want to joke around, you know, and I did have that happen once, not with this group, but with another group. Um, they called us out and it was more so uh, the gentleman that lived there with his girlfriend. He was believing everything that was happening. Everything that was happening was when he was not um, in the room, but his girlfriend was. And we just kind of put two to two together and found out she was doing 
all this stuff to make him think the place was haunted. And I kind of called them out on it. They didn't like that, but I called them out on it. And um, eventually, I think he did respond saying that she did fess up to everything. So there are some people out there that try to make us look like, you know, idiots you know, or they think we're freaks, but we're just like everybody else. Well, you have the people too that want to do that for five minutes of fame too. Yeah, <laughs> people who want five minutes of fame, yeah. <laughs> so, but we do, I mean, we do enjoy it. Um, I wish we could get something soon started up again. Uh, it's been kind of slow this year, but you know, there's still, it normally kicks up a little bit more around Halloween time and we have been, uh, we've been asked to, one time we did a Halloween party, so we've sort of like more of a, I don't the know. No, the Novelty Act. Yes, the Novelty <laughs> Act. <laughs> that was actually the uh, investigation that I felt that something, you know, attached itself to me. So there was activity there, but, you know, like I said, you know, like she was saying, we were there as like the entertainment. Yeah, yeah, taking people around, yeah, groups Which around. I didn't like that too much. I like just to, you know, go around, do our thing, but not try to, you know, put on a show. Because we're not here to do a show, we're just here to, you know, find out what's going on, give people a peace of mind of what's going on, and then try to help them if we can. So, 